The real newspaper just royally enraged everyone in America with what they said about Vegas victims. There are many ways to cope with a tragedy. Some show their emotion outwardly, some keep it inside and some stick their head in the sand and go straight to denial. When something happens that shatters our lives or our security, we might have any number of responses, and that's completely normal. What is neither normal nor acceptable is poking fun at the catastrophic loss of life. One loud and proud liberal publication from Vermont decided that they would publish a crude comic about the Las Vegas massacre, hoping to make a few bucks off of the tragedy. What they got, according to Daily Mail, was an outraged readership who demanded a retraction and apology. A small Vermont newspaper has been forced to apologize for publishing a tasteless cartoon depicting the Las Vegas massacre. The Bennington Banner published the editorial cartoon on Tuesday, just two days after the worst mass shooting in U.S. history, which showed a pile of dead bodies with the caption Whatever Happens in Vegas. It sparked outrage among readers who branded the image disgusting while some even demanded that cartoonist Randall Enos and executive editor Kevin Moran should resign. Others called for a boycott of the local Vermont paper. The disgusting amount of disrespect for the lives of their fellow Americans is appalling. There are a lot of situations that can reasonably warrant a little bit of joking, but this is not one of them. No matter what caused the shooting, no matter what you think will prevent it in the future and no matter your political affiliation this is not an event that should be made light of. The news outlet's president, Frederick Krautberg said the decision to publish was made in haste and had been insensitive. The fury over the cartoon was stoked by the fact that one of the 58 victims killed in the shooting was a local. Sandy Casey, 35, of nearby Dorset, Vermont, was gunned down and killed when Stephen Craig Paddock, 64, opened fire from his 32nd floor hotel window on a crowd of thousands below who were attending a music festival. Dozens were killed and more than 500 were injured in the Sunday night bloodbath. Apparently, it would have been okay to make fun of the shootings as long as it was in service to more gun control but since people were offended, it's not okay. This is what happens when people don't care about right and wrong, only what they'll get in trouble for. Bennington Banner executive editor Kevin Moran tried to rationalize the offensive cartoon, saying it was meant as commentary on gun control, but acknowledged that publishing it in Tuesday's edition was not the right time or the right place. As horrifying as this kind of unfeeling content it is, it's not out of character for a publication of this type. The Bennington Banner is a far-left-leaning paper who has a history of supporting the liberal agenda and crying wolf whenever a conservative issue happens to win the day. They were greatly disturbed when President Trump was elected saying that many in largely liberal progressive Vermont were stunned and anguished by the election of Donald Trump as president. Even hypothesizing that the Democrats would have won the presidency if Bernie Sanders had been on the ticket. Unfortunately, the focus of this tragedy has been turned away from the awful nature of the violence and toward the possible political affiliations of the victims. This is troubling for many reasons, not the least of which we should be ashamed to be a country that considers someone with differing political views to be worthy of death. But that's the story that's circling the disaster that happened on Sunday night. Here are some of the reactions to the cartoon. Hopefully what happens in Vermont is about to stay in Vermont because of the sharp decrease in readership that should follow a debacle of this magnitude. Here's more from our source about the details of Sunday night's shooting and the ensuing chaos. The Bennington Banner published the editorial cartoon on Tuesday, just two days after the worst mass shooting in U.S. history, which showed a pile of dead bodies with the caption Whatever Happens in Vegas. Moran tried to rationalize the offensive cartoon saying it was meant as commentary on gun control, and the likelihood that the government will take little to no action to introduce weapon regulations. But he acknowledged that publishing it in Tuesday's edition was not the right time or the right place for that conversation, adding we must first mourn and honor the victims. We regret publishing the cartoon, he added in the public apology. Dozens were killed and more than 500 were injured in the Las Vegas massacre on Sunday pictured, a man lays on top of a woman as others flee the music festival grounds. She appears to be alive and moving. The news outlet's president, 
Frederick Rotberg said the decision to publish was made in haste and had been insensitive. Local pizzeria owner Joel Millington said that the fact a local woman was among the victims made the cartoon even more insensitive. The newspaper paid tribute to Casey in a statement, saying, Our thoughts and prayers go out to the family and friends of Sandy Casey, originally from East Dorset, Vermont, who are enduring grief beyond compare today. We apologize to them and others affected. Rutberg also acknowledged that the gravity of our error in judgment was magnified by the fact that one of the victims of this unspeakable horror was a native of Dorset, whose family and friends must have been particularly offended by this cartoon. The publisher and editor of the Telegraph Herald, which posted the syndicated editorial cartoon on their website, have also issued an apology, saying they are embarrassed by our error in judgment and how we have handled this situation. Editorial cartoons are social commentary, and we never saw it as an attempt at humor. No one in our organization saw the events in Las Vegas as anything but utter tragedy. We are deeply sorry that it came across as anything less, the statement by publisher Steve Fisher and executive editor Amy Gilligan read. The cartoon sparked outrage among readers who branded the image disgusting while some even demanded that cartoonist Randall Enos and executive editor Kevin Moran should resign. Design.